When it comes to planets in the solar system, there is no shortage of different mysteries. And when it comes to planets like Neptune and Uranus, we've discussed quite a few of them in just the last two years. You can probably find some of these videos somewhere in the description. But when it comes to most mysteries in regards to Neptune and Uranus, the majority of them have always revolved around various unusual features discovered in the atmospheres of these two planets. Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about a very interesting potential resolution to a lot of these mysteries of both Neptune and Uranus, recently uncovered by the scientists behind the paper you can find in the description below. With the solution itself being very intriguing and actually explaining everything about Neptune, including its unusual dark spots. So let's discuss this in a little bit more detail and also talk a little bit more about what we now know about these so-called ice giants, the large gas planets that pretty much most of the star systems out there seem to possess as well. And just to give you a sense of comparison here, here's Jupiter, here's what Saturn looks like, and here are both Neptune and Uranus next to the other terrestrial planets. So as you can see, first of all, they're obviously significantly smaller, but second of all, they both seem to possess unusual blue shade, yet Neptune is much more blue than Uranus which has always been one of the more unexplained phenomena. It was very difficult for the scientists to figure out what happens inside these planets to make them this unusual shade. On top of this, Uranus, for the most part, seems to be more or less the same shade. It also doesn't seem to possess too many features in the atmosphere itself. Whereas Neptune does seem to possess a lot more features, including some relatively easily visible clouds and these strange dark spots that appear once in a while with the most famous one being known as the Great Dark Spot, a feature that's not permanent, but seems to have existed on Neptune for at least a few decades. And one of the bigger mysteries in the last couple of decades has actually been in regards to its unusual disappearance and then reappearance later on. As a matter of fact, it's not even certain if it's the same spot that keeps reappearing or if it's new spots being formed somewhere in the atmosphere. With somewhat similar but less visible spots sometimes appearing on Uranus as well, but none of them lasting just as long. And then there is the biggest mystery of them all, the more obvious one. Why is it that despite similar sizes, similar masses, even similar locations in the solar system and potentially extremely similar composition, these two planets look somewhat different? As if they had completely different things happening in their atmospheres. And in the past, one of the explanations for all of this was because, well, maybe back in the days, Uranus received a major collision from some sort of a planet that essentially made its sort of orbit on the side, and as a result, very likely changed the atmospheric composition, overall turning the planet extremely different from Neptune. But that's not really an explanation that, oh, well, I guess explains anything. It still doesn't explain exactly what happens in the atmospheres of these planets to make them so unique. Moreover, it doesn't explain why is it that Neptune has these spots pretty much all the time, yet Uranus doesn't seem to have anything as dramatic as this. But none of these observations provided a more wholesome approach. Pretty much all of the investigations in the past mostly focused on the appearance of the atmosphere in very specific wavelengths, for example in the infrared or in visual light, or sometimes even looking at this in the ultraviolet. This new model does, however, it actually decided to focus on the multiple atmospheric layer approach. In other words, it tried to explain these planets as having several different layers that would be all visible in different wavelengths. And specifically, three main layers. And these layers seem to be for the most part different. With the data for all of this coming from the iconic Hubble telescope, but also NASA's infrared telescopes and even Gemini Observatory. So in other words, they combined different types of observations from different wavelengths in order to prove their point. And here's what they found. Let's start with the color itself. Why is Neptune so much more blue? Well, according to the scientists, we basically have to start descending into the layers of the atmosphere to discover the solution to this. As we descend through the atmosphere here, in the top layers, approximately 200 kilometers before we reach the bottom of this atmosphere, we're going to find what's known as the extended photochemical haze. They refer to it as aerosol 3 a relatively thin layer that seems to be almost identical on both planets. And on Neptune, right above this layer, that's where we also get a lot of different methane ice particles forming various clouds. These high altitude clouds is usually how you can tell Neptune from Uranus almost right away. Uranus does not have them. But as you start descending a little bit more, about 50 kilometers or so, you're going to find yourself in the second layer, the most important one responsible for a lot of the differences. This middle layer seems to contain a lot of different haze particles, in this case referred to as aerosol 2. 
And for some reason, it seems to be much thicker on Uranus, so right here, compared to Neptune. With the haze itself very likely being produced from methane condensation somewhere in this second layer. Although the scientists in this case believe that right at the bottom of the second layer, a lot of these ice haze particles grow extremely quickly to large size and turn into snow falling into the lower layers. However, this process seems to be way more efficient on Neptune compared to Uranus. And so the methane ice on Uranus does not condense as much and so there isn't as much snow going on with a lot more particles in this case remaining in this haze state in the second layer. And as a result, the second layer here makes Uranus appear to be a lot more white and a lot more washed out compared to Neptune. Even though below this, in the lowest layer, they have exactly the same thing happening and pretty much exactly the same composition. With this lowest aerosol 1 layer essentially being extremely thick and being mostly composed of a mixture of hydrogen sulfide ice and a lot of particles produced by the interaction of the atmosphere with the sunlight. And so the explanation for the difference in color is that it seems to snow more in that second layer of Neptune compared to Uranus, with most of this haze disappearing because it turns into snow particles. And also just as a side note, the pressure here is extremely similar to the atmospheric pressure here on planet Earth. It's anywhere from 1 to 2 bar whereas the pressure in aerosol 1 layer is approximately 10 times higher. And on top of this, there's a lot of recirculation of material right here, with the condensation of hydrogen sulfide ice recreating a lot of the haze that then returns into the second layer, and essentially creating this really interesting cycle that seems to be a lot more active on Neptune compared to Uranus. Moreover, the model here explains that these spots very likely exist in the deepest layer. And so through the process of darkening of particles in this deepest layer, once in a while we seem to get these unusual dark spots visible in Neptune, and only occasionally visible in Uranus because the process here is not as effective, with Neptune just being a little bit more active when it comes to these atmospheric interactions. And so this model of vertical aerosol distribution does seem to explain quite a lot with the model even being able to reconstruct what both Neptune and Uranus would look like with, without, or with different types of haze. And all of this seems to match directly what we're observing in the actual solar system. And even explaining why the Neptune's dark spot seems to look so different from the Jupiter's red spot. In this case, it's once again due to these layers and due to the aerosols. And so honestly, at the moment, unless someone manages to prove something incorrect about this, this possibly explains everything. It explains the difference between these two planets, it explains exactly what's going on inside their upper atmosphere, and moreover, it explains the dark spots, it explains the unusual cloud-like formations in the upper atmosphere of Neptune, and explains why Uranus seems to look nothing like it. But what it doesn't explain is, why is it that Neptune seems to have slightly more active upper atmosphere compared to Uranus? And that's actually something we'll talk about in some of the future videos, as more explanations and more evidence is provided. But to give you a bit of a preview, it's really most likely due to the major difference in the internal temperature of these planets, because of a different evolution of these two planets in the earlier solar system. But we'll talk about this in some of the future videos, so on that note, check out the study in the description below, subscribe, maybe share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful present t-shirt you can find in the description. And either way, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.